Oh ho, miHoYo just keeps hiding more and more juicy content from us with every single release of a trailer. And 2.3 makes it even spicier for all the Albedo mains all over Teyvat. But not just Albedo, we're gonna talk about every detail you may or may not have seen in the recent 2.3 trailer. And to anyone who doesn't like spoilers, I'm warning you now, tread carefully. So welcome to another 10 things you might have missed video, this time about patch 2.3, Shadows Amidst Snowstorms. At number 1, let's start off with Albedo. In the first scene of Shadows Amid Snowstorms, he mentions that humans prefer to live through life at a day-by-day -day basis. More of a normal human life, of course. Compared to Albedo, who pursues what he describes as transcendent and miraculous, this makes Albedo's character as a being of unknown origin different to what humans think, feel, experience, and strive to become. He also mentions that Dragon's Spine hides within it the greatest mysteries and secrets that can ever be found. And our previous interactions with him in Dragon's Spine are a testament to that statement. Both Eula and Albedo mention the mysteries within Dragon's Spine's cold and snowy covered landscape, but did you notice that in Eula's lines, she also describes her personality and the way she is viewed by most of the people in Mondstadt. Another thing is that both of them seem to be concerned with the way the snow has been acting lately. There's something going on in Dragonspine, and the title of the patch itself is the answer, as well as the words to the title that seem to reflect greatly to a certain event 500 years ago. Onto the third bit, somebody's been stealing Albedo's research notes, and we're now on a quest to help him find it. But more importantly, to find the person who stole it, and to find out why or what they intend to do with it. Now let's step into some theory here because there is literally no context to what is happening in Dragon's Spine. If you go back all the way to 2.1 and 2.2, there was only one person who we know is missing. And the recent event we partook in, which is the Labyrinth of Warriors, it states that he's been out of contact for quite some time. This is just a theory, but could the person who stole the notes and is now in Dragon's Spine be Scaramouche, and is now after what Albedo has been researching and wants to take it for his own benefit. We know from Child that all the Harbingers have their own agendas, and Scaramouche disappearing and being mentioned again in the Labyrinth event aren't really a coincidence either. We also know Dragon's Spine has the heart of Durin, the Shadow Dragon, which is still alive but is dormant. And the Heart of Durin itself is basically a core of corruption that resulted in the Sinner Alchemist Gold's research for Canria. Anyway, we'll find out soon enough once patch 2.3 comes out. Onto number 4, in this scene, Albedo looks like he's alone and was about to be swept by an avalanche. As for the avalanche being natural or man-made, meaning that someone was purposefully targeting Albedo, we're not completely sure. But if an avalanche hits Albedo's campsite, he'd be trapped in his little research cave for quite some time. Until either we, the travelers, go there, or until one of the adventurers do. But Albedo being hit by an avalanche or being trapped underneath the snow could be a reason for why we ended up fighting him in the final scene. And speaking of the final scene, at number 5, it looks like Albedo is a lot happier fighting us than he is at fighting Hilly Churls. Oh hey, we're gonna be fighting with Bennett and Amber as well. So hell yeah for Amber mains and Bennett mains out there, as well as of course the Eula mains. This is also the first time we see Albedo smiling from ear to ear. We can see him fire frost shards and even see another form of frost attack that comes out of the ground and is then destroyed by Bennett's ultimate. One thing you might not have noticed is that we are fighting him in the place where we last fought the huge Cryo Regis Vine which could explain why he was attacking with such cryo spells, and that it might also be the place where we find and meet our culprit as well. As for why they were fighting him, well, I'll tell you right now. The reason why we're fighting Albedo is probably because he's been infected by the sin of the abyss, either from a certain person or from whatever's inside Dragonspine, which is the heart of Durin, or maybe even worse. But regardless of who or what inflicted it, I think it's the same corruption that everyone else has when they get infected by the Abyss. 
and we now have to keep him from being completely corrupted before he starts going mad. Number 7 is gonna be a follow-up to the previous. Number 6, if you can remember the story of Chiyo the Oni, she was corrupted by a beast of sin, and the so-called sin that was corrupting her made her go into a mad frenzy, basically attacking everything she saw. It's possible that Albedo was also infected by this quote-unquote sin. The other character we know who's been exposed to the abyss and its abyssiness is Child or Tartalia, who became a walking killing machine that can talk. Now Albedo on the other hand has been studying Chemia but hasn't been in contact with anything abyss related. So it's possible that we might end up having to do something to either calm him down or destroy whatever is making him the way he is. For anyone who's thinking that he's gonna die, well, I don't know. And as for what that is, I don't know either. So we're just gonna have to wait until the actual patch. As for what we're gonna try to do or what we're gonna destroy to help save Albedo, I don't know either. So we're just gonna have to wait until the actual patch. On to the eighth thing you might have missed, the new boss we're going to fight is of course on Surumi Island. The big boss of all Rift Hounds and Rift Whelps, the Wolf King of the Rift. Now, if you were watching closely, the tear of which the Wolf King is coming out of is obviously what we call a rift. Inside that rift, we can only theorize that it's some world that only they can go through, similar to the Abyss Order's rifts, but sadly we can't say that this is actually an Abyss rift, because comparing this one with the ones that the Abyss Heralds use, you can see that they're pretty much two different rifts, or portals. And the Wolf King that Mihoyo chose was Geo to fit the theme of Patch 2.3. But we've yet to find out if there is a difference between Rift Wolves that are Electro and Geo, since the Abyss also has Electro Heralds. And we've also yet to find out if the Rift has other Rift creatures that we can fight against, especially the ones that look like a tiger with the tail of a snake. Second to the last, at number 9, the main enemy of the new Arataki Ito quest seems to be the Nobushi and the Kairagi, and it also looks like there's been a hostage taking within their hideout. Along with that, the Nobushi have got their hands on Shikifuda charms, similar to the ones that we used in the Omnu Chamber of the Labyrinth of Warriors event. And the conditions for this one in particular, Shikifuda, is related to the whole domain, in that when it's torn apart, all other Shikifudas that are placed and activated will explode, much like a self-destruct charm. And last, but uh, maybe it is the least, the location for our Taki Ito's quest is probably going to be the island of Yashiori. And it looks like one of the hostages are inside of the cage hanging from the ceiling. Now obviously there's no way that there is a hostage inside that because we can see it in the trailer. But why else would they angle it in such a weird way? Also in the trailer, there is nothing in front of Ito to hit or talk to. So I'd say it's all just a move to keep the plot hidden. So keep your heads up for it to change once we get patch 2.3. And there it is, the 10 things you might have missed in Genshin Impact's 2.3 trailer, Shadows Amid Snowstorms. Hope you guys enjoyed the live stream and trailers as much as I did. I am definitely going to pull for the Alchemy Boy since they've now changed how the banners work. And with that, I'll be ending my video here. Be sure to like the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel, as well as clicking the bell icon to stay updated to the videos I post. Comment down below if you think I missed something or if what I say doesn't make any sense. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!